Amal, this year for Nochel. Hi everyone, it's Miss Nochel. Um, these are very late, but these are some videos on the poems. I'm doing it in the sequence that my school's doing it in. So the first one is Spruidian. Not everyone might have done this already. But yeah, another disclaimer is just I will stumble over my words. I will make small mistakes. Sometimes I think I will try and explain something because it makes sense in my head. But it might not make the best sense to you. But hopefully it can still help you. Because at the end of the year, I think it's sometimes just easier to quickly recap and review with these videos. Um, because you have to study 10 poems and that's quite a lot. So we have Spruirien. So volg wat uit die naarkies kil kom, kry die reek van die vrug. So it's basically like the mist that comes out of like a notchy peel when you open it. And it gives you like the full on flavor of the, um, like, and scent of the fruit. So it is a liefdes gedig. It's a love poem, but not in, like, necessarily the traditional sense. It's more like a love for women. So a liefde vir vrouwe. Die gedig verwees na die invloed van die vrouwe op die sprekers lere. So the poem is referring to the influence of women on the speaker's life. Thema, die spreker eer die vrou, the speaker's honoring women. Stemming is, like, the mood of the poem. So romantic, romantic, frolic, happy, spellerig, playful. Toon is like the tone, and specifically the speaker's tone. So positive, het goeie herinnering on vrou, it's positive. Um, he has good memories of women. And then ek spreker, a first person speaker. Herhaling van myn ek, dit maak die gedig meer persoonlik. So there's repetition of myn ek, and that makes the poem more personal, because obviously it's from the, spoke, like the speaker's direct perspective. And then typografie sortier is the structure of the poem. Uiterlijke bouw, so what it like literally looks like. Three strophes, three stanzas, 15 fascials, 15 lines. The first and third stanza is a quatrain, which is a quatrain in English, I believe. And then the second stanza is seven lines. Strophe drie herhaling van strophe ene is a refrain, geer die effect van a liki. So, because stanza three is like a repetition of stanza one, it gives us the idea of a chorus. And therefore, it gives us the idea of a song. Or the effects of a song. Freie fash. So in this case, it refers to freie fash in the build. Like, what it looks like. So there is geen vaste rhyme scheme on So there is no set rhyme scheme. Verschil in fash deals and length is. There's a difference in the length of, like, the lines. And then also verschil in the grote strophes. The stanzas also aren't exactly the same. So because of that, because the poem, you know, will look like this. Kind of all over the place. That is why it's freie fash. And then strophe 1 and 3 in Gippings, and stanza 1 and 3, we have like an indentation. And then in the bow is about, is there progression in the poem? So progressie, strophe 3 begin met oe, wat die op die sprekers se vadere bewondering en verwondering vir of met vrouwe. So there is progression, because although stanza 3 is a repetition of stanza 1, it starts with oe, which um, just kind of indicates like the further admiration and amazement that the speaker has for women. And then rhyme schema, so whether there's actually something in that rhymes. Strophe 1 and 3, freie vers, stanza 1 and 3 is free verse. And strophe 2, gebroken rhyme, vers heel 6 tot 11 eindrhyme. So stanza 2 has rhyming, like it has words that rhyme, 6 to 11, but it's broken and therefore it's gebroken rhyme. So synesthesie, syntuiglijke waarneming. So synesthesie, wanneer een waarneming op meer as een syntuig aanspraak maak. So, what it just refers to here is like using your senses to observe something, and that usually you would use more than one of your senses to observe something. Then he spreek er full sin in reik. So in this poem, there is more than one sense that is being used. Um, it says specifically the speaker feels things, like when he plays with a nachi peel, he sees things, but specifically reik, he smells things. Reke equals herinneringe. Reek sin teig speel a belangrike rol in die gedig. So it just says in this case, that the, um, every sense, like, reminds him, or, like, takes him back to a time, reminds him of someone or something that happened, and therefore the, well, smell plays a really important role in this poem. So this is the poem, and it's important to always, like, hear the poem to see if you yourself can identify alliteration assonance. In this case, I did indicate it, so just to go through it before we read the poem, the alliteracy is in yellow, so it's a repetition of consonants, right? Asunansi is a repetition of vowel sounds, emphasis on sounds. It has to sound similar. And then elisi is klank weglating. So instead of saying dor is, you'd say dosh in the poem. And it just kind of helps with the flow of the poem. It kind of is also how Afrikaans people speak, right? 
And then in Kiepung, as you can see, there's like an indentation. There's like this space. Obviously, usually if it's on a paper, it would be like a white space. In this case, it's kind of orange. Um, but there's a space before the line starts. And therefore, there's in, it's an indentation. It's emphasizing the chorus. Beklemt in die refrain. Spreerien. My noy is in an arki, my oma in kaneel. Dos iemand, iemand in an eis, dos a vrou in elke geer. As ek is stikkie narki skuld, dis my vingers baig of knak. Breek uit die klein sproerien, wat gerend om my hand uitsak. Die boerde weer van die swart vol loos, en met die narkies om my heen, weet ek hoe dat die vrou kan troos. O my nooi is in een narkie, my oma in kaneel, dos iemand, iemand in een huis, dos een vrou in elke geer. So the first stanza. My nooi is in een narkie translates to my girlfriend is in a narchi, so it's vergierlik figurative. Die nooi is nie letterlijk in narkie nie, maar die skerp geer en reek laat die spreker aan haar denk. So it says not literally is this person like the girlfriend in a narchi or in a narchi, but basically the like strong scent, the aroma, the flavor of a narchi reminds the speaker of his like girlfriend, of his loved one. So narki is a citrus fruit, it's a citrus fruit. Also just important, please remember to spell narki with one A, not a double A. Um, otherwise it will be like a spelling mistake in essence or an English word. My oma in kaneel, my grandmother in cinnamon. Vergierlik, figurative. Die geer in reek van kaneel is vir die spreker synoniem met al oma. Het miskien vir die spreker koos met kaneel gemaak, so spannenkoek. So it just says the like smell, sense, flavor, aroma of cinnamon is synonymous for the speaker with their grandmother and this might just mean that the grandmother used cinnamon in their cooking um you know um and the example i have is panakuk that's the first thing i think of when i think of cinnamon kaneel is a specific it's a spice Dosh iemand, iemand in anis. so there's someone someone in any seed and once again that is for gierlik um, and also just any seed is also a spice Die skerp geer en reek van Anais, wat teenwoordig ook een vrou vir die spreker, maar kan nie onthou wie dit is nie, en probeer hard om te onthou, so die persoon moes belangrijk vir die spreker gewees het. So ironically, yes, he can't remember their name, but he's trying to, and because whenever he like smells or tastes or whatever any seed, he thinks of this person who at this point is nameless, they still played an important role in like his life. Maybe this is a memory of someone when he was very young and that's why he's struggling to remember them. But either way, because he's trying to remember them, the person is important. Haraling van iemand, was onzeker oor wie die persoon is. So there's repetition of iemand, which just kind of means like, he's just unsure who the person is. Like there is a person and he's trying hard to remember, but he's unsure. Ellipse, denk of wonder oor die persoon. There's an ellipse, so the person is thinking or wondering about this person. Daar's a vrou in elke geer, there's a woman in every flavor. So vergierlik, figurative. Elke vrou het a aangename geer wat haar uniek, wat uniek aan haar is. So each woman has like an, an like, nice scent, aroma, flavor that is unique to her. And it beklemt dat vrou uniek is, it emphasizes that women are unique. And then there's an uitroepteken, an exclamation mark. But claim to the speaker shake stars of bewondering. So it emphasizes like the speaker's amazement and like um, admiration. Vrouwen speel a positive role in the speaker's life. Women play a positive role in the speaker's life. Um, and this I just added, but like I really struggled to explain this. So it just says, you know, in Afrikaans we have the word riek, which actually means like smell, like the smell of something. So why specifically in this poem that the person use gier, which kind of actually directly translates to flavor? It kind of is to say that it's like, it includes everything. It includes like the flavor, the scent, the aroma, everything of something. So what they're trying to say is that every aspect, well, that's how I interpreted it, like, every aspect of women the speaker admires um, and is amazed with or by. And then, so for one summing, stands our one summary, bepaal the geer of reka rinder die spreker on specific flowers. So, specific flavors and scents remind the speaker of specific women that has been present in his life. Okay. So, lines five to eight. As ek a stikkie narki skil, tis in my fingers baig of knak, Break I die klein sprüri en wat geen tomaat uitzak. So just a loose translation is that when the person plays with the piece of the speaker plays with the piece of narchi skill with like skill well peel with their fingers and like they bend it or they break it. Um, there's like a small mist that breaks out from the narchi that like just kind of falls all over the speaker's hands. 
So wanneer die spreker met die narkie skil speel, en het breek, krij die heerlijke geer van die narkie, en het herinner om aan sy nooi, versjels 1 en 12. So it just says, when a speaker plays with a narkie peel, and it breaks, and the scent falls all around them, this flavor falls all around them, um, it reminds him of his girlfriend. And like, this is obviously a referral to like, lines 1 and 12, that says, my girlfriend's in a narkie. So there's also just enyam bemen, so the line 5 flows into 6, you don't take a pause, 7 into 8, and that just helps the poem flow. And then baich just means like to bend, like omfo. And then knak is break, like you break something when you knak it. And then klein sprurien, sorry, everything doesn't line up perfectly, but klein sprurien just refers to the fact that it's a small amount of mist that actually breaks out. So bikkie fijn drippel sap, wat vanaf die narki stil vry, vanaf die narki stil vry gestil word. So it just says it's like a few drops of this mist, um, of this juice that is being like released. From the Nachi peel. And then in line 7. We have infashi. So infashi is when you have. Switched around word order to emphasize something specifically. So you put something specific in the beginning. Something specific at the end. In this case it says breek. Because you would have said. Rather said die klein sprudien breek uit. But it's just emphasizing breek. But klem toen dat die geer uitbreek om sy hande verspreid. So it's just emphasizing that this flavor basically. Like spreads all over his hands and he can smell it proper proper like it's a strong scent and then gerend is aangename gerend so it's like a nice flavor it's good um it's not something bad and then fashil says tot acht so line six to eight the sap of of sprurien van die narkies aan sy hande so it just says like the juice or the mist from the um narchi is on his hands or over his hands and then, die boerde weer van swart verloos, en met die narkies om my heen, weet ek hoe dat die vrou kan troos. So it says, the orchids of swart verloos, which is the place in case it in. Um, this, basically, the scene takes him back to this time when he was younger, where they went to these orchids that had all these narchy, like trees or whatever, and, you know, he was there with his girlfriend, and she consoled him, and they had a grand old time. So weer, hy is bekend met die die boerde, jy gaat in ringe, so he's, like, familiar with these orchids, like, it reminds him of his youth. So, the swart for Louis is the swart om verloosie rivier in KZN, so it's this river in KZN. He regeer wat om sy hande is, a real aag, laat om aan die boorde van die swart om verloosie rivier in Natal ding. So, it just means, the slave when it breaks out, not only does it remind him of his girlfriend, it takes him back to these orchids here by the river in KZN. Okay, Fashil 10 tot 11. Hy dink terug aan sy groot woord daar, waar hy en sy nooit tyd tussen die narkie bome in die boorde spandeer het. So it just says, you know, it makes him, it takes him back to like his growing up days, where he play, oh, spent time with his girlfriend um, amongst the narkie trees in the orchids. Haar vriendskap is vir hom vertroostend of maak hom gelukkig en kalm. So her friendship is like comforting to him and it makes him happy and it makes him calm. Tijd som met haar sal altyd vir hom kostbaar wees. Time with her will always be, um, oh my gosh, dear to him. Like, it will be valuable. Um, I can't remember what the direct translation of kostbaar is. And then, stroof vir 2, bestaan uit 7 versiels. So, stands that 2 actually consists of 7 lines. Getal van volmaaktheid. This, 7 is apparently like the number of something being like whole. Um, something being perfect. And vrou is volmaak, net soos hulle is, is trying to give the idea that women are perfect as they are. Even though they might have flaws, they are still perfect. And then this is just a repetition, but it starts with oe. So oe, they start so on, it like indicates this admiration and amazement of women. Progressie, verder bewondering and verwondering van vrou is. So there's progression because there's more um, of this love for women in this, like, well, stands out, although it's repetition, it starts with O's, oh, like, oh, wow, you know, like, it's a good thing, it's a good exclamation, and then cyclist, it's like the poem has a cycle, because it starts and it ends with the same chorus, which also just means that it will continue going, which just um, kind of adds to the idea that this speaker would keep on admiring women, and then gedig opsomming, just the summary of the poem, bepaalde geer of reka herinner die spreker aan specifieke vrouwe, so specific sense of flavors reminds the speaker of specific women. So that's the end, um, I think this is a little bit chaotic, and just so you all know, there were like multiple cats, because I'm in my car recording, um, because there's someone in my house, um, yeah, there are multiple cats here, and obviously, a lot of people will be watching this video, um, 
people who are in my class and my school would know that I've had a problem with mice or a mouse in my house and I'm traumatized. So every time I see something move in my yard, I honestly, my heart stops. But anyways, y'all, I hope this helped you a little bit and that you could use this as revision and good luck. Tot ziens allemaal.